Hi folks, Greg Reverdio here from Pilot Institute and in today's video I want to do three things. I want to show you how to submit a lens request as a Part 107 pilot and as a recreational pilot during the day. It's the same process. I want to show you how to submit a lens request at night, which is a brand new thing in a loft and that's only available to Part 107 pilots. And then lastly, I want to show you how to submit a request above grid numbers. If you've ever tried this, you know you can do it on the FAA drone zone. You can also do it in a loft. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is also something you can do as a Part 107. So if you need to know how to submit a lens request, this is the place to be. Let's get in there. All right, the first thing that I want to show you in this video is how to submit a simple lens request as either a part 107 or as a recreational flyer. Now, the process I'm going to show you right now is to submit a day request or to submit a night request. Keep in mind the night request is only available to part 107 holders. If you're a recreational flyer, you cannot fly in controlled airspace at the moment at night. So. The easy way to do this is to download the Aloft app. If you haven't done that just yet, you will find a link down in the description. But once you have it, then once we get into the app in itself, it's going to show you your location and then you can start navigating around to go and figure out which area you want to fly into. Now I'm going to go and fly in this area right here, which is um, in the uh, northeast of Phoenix, which is Phoenix Deer Valley Airport. Now this is a very busy airport, a lot of flight training that goes on over there. Now you can also see a new, if you're familiar with Aloft, which used to be called Kitty Hawk, they've kind of applied a new um, layout for the maps in here and it looks a little bit cleaner. I think I actually like it. I think it looks very nice and uh, very easy to read. But let's say that we wanted to fly in this area that is at 100 feet. Now. Again, I can go at the bottom right here and I can look at all the information, but there's a little button that says add. So I'm going to tap on add and it says request, request lens authorization. So I'm going to tap on that and that's bringing me back to my current location. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to go back to the area where we wanted to fly and um, just say we want to fly in this area. I'm going to tap on the screen and here is our uh, dot. If we tap on the blue area on the bottom left corner, it says Class D Airport. Now this is good. It tells us information about the airport. There's a hundred. It says that we can get altitude authorization up to 100 feet. Let's say that we wanted to fly at 100 feet and that's what we're going to do right now. We're not flying above. We're not requesting to fly above just yet. We're going to type on get authorization get authorization right here. And this is where it splits. It splits between part 107 holders and recreational flyers. It doesn't matter which one you pick. It matters because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to dictate the kind of rules that you follow. Either you follow the rules under 44809 uh, if you're flying as a recreational flyer or if you're flying under Part 107 where well, you're going to follow the rules under Part 107. So we're going to type Part 107. But again, if you're doing it for recreational purposes, same idea right here. And then it's asking us what altitude do we want to fly at and then what uh, region we want to fly into. You can tap on the corner and hold. So I'm going to tap and hold on the bottom right corner and then I can move the bottom right corner around. Again, tap and hold and then move this around and then move this around as well and then move it around right here. Now I'm not going to encroach into the zero grid that's on the top right uh, on the northeast just because I, I don't want to I don't want to make it more complicated because then we're going to have to request to fly above of uh, zero feet. So make sure that when you do this, you're not overlapping. Uh, we are right at the edge of the airspace right here and you can see that the airspace is round, but our grid is actually rectangular. And you notice that uh, anything outside of the rectangle that's outside of the airspace is not included in here. So that would not be an area where we need to have uh, airspace authorization. So. Bottom left, it says step one, what altitude do you want to fly at? Well, I'm going to fly right here up to 100 feet. That's it. I'm going to click next. If I wanted to fly above, remember, I'm going to need to get further coordination. It's going to take a little bit more time if I wanted to do this. Next thing, when and how long? Now, I'm going to fly today. And then here I have two options. In the past, all I could do was actually request uh, during the day, during daylight. Now we have the ability to do it at night. So if I wanted to fly today and I wanted to do it at 
10 p.m. tonight, then I can actually do this. Again, in the past you couldn't do this, it would basically turn you down. It says authorizations can be made up to 90 days in advance. Uh, each authorization can be made up to 12 hours in duration and 10 nautical miles in the area. So that's a pretty wide area right here. And it says night operations are only available for commercial Part 107 operators who have completed required FAA training and testing and have equipped anti-collision lighting visible from at least three statute miles. You need to do the training on the FA website if you haven't done that. If you took your test before April of this year, you need to do the FA training on the FA website for free. It's called ALC 677. It's a recurrent training module. It's free. You can do it online. And once you're done, then you qualify to fly at night. If you took your test after April 6 of this year, then you are qualified to fly at night without having to do the FA training. So just remember that part. It also says in here, all civil twilight operation, 30 minutes after sunset, 30 minutes before sunrise, requires anti-collision lighting visible from three statute mile. Make sure you have that on your drone. And it also says in here, operators may have up to five overlapping uh, approved authorization within 100 miles of each other. That's essentially if you have a large area where you have overlapping, if you're doing mapping for a very large uh, segment. But you've read this, you selected when you want to fly. In here, we're going to do it at night. Um, same thing if you did it during the day. And then we're going to click next. And then it says you are eligible for auto approval in uh, KDVT, which is the airport. And then we can click next. And essentially, here comes your information right here. And then you can read all of the, uh, the statements about Lance and you can agree and submit. Once you do this, you will get a text message on the phone number that's indicated in the top right of this form right here. And then as soon as you do this, you'll get a text message on your cell phone. It'll take about 30 seconds, possibly less and then you're good to go, you're authorized to fly. Make sure you read the approval in here. Make sure you read the text that is sent to you because there are some conditions in here that you have to follow. So when you're done, you've submitted your lens request. It took me several minutes to say this, but in real life, it goes actually pretty quickly. And now again, the new thing uh, in, in 2021, in April of 20, in August of 2021, sorry, is the fact that you can actually submit these at night. I'm not gonna submit it because I don't wanna waste uh, the time because I'm not going to be flying in that area. The next thing that I want to show you is how we can do uh, a, an approval to fly above the grid. So we're going to go back to that same spot right here and we're going to click again on the blue area here to give us more information about the airport and we're going to type on get authorization again. The approval to fly above grid number is only available on the part 107. So I'm not going to select recreational here. I'm just going to click part 107. Uh, by the way, Make sure that you are certified in the part 107 if you're gonna submit this. The fact that you submitted in here, they will let you do it. It doesn't mean that it's legal. If you don't have the certification in your pocket, that doesn't work, all right? So here, let's say that we wanted to fly at 200 feet, all right? Um, we are outside of the auto approval. So this is gonna to go to the FAA, get approved by the FAA, which means that it's gonna take several days. So we're gonna click next. The date, if I leave it as today, it's going to say, uh-uh, ain't going to work. So today is Wednesday. I'm going to submit it for Monday. I'm going to give them enough time to do this. Now, the FA says you need to give them 90 days. Well, it's a bit of a lie. It takes a lot less than that. I've been lucky in some airports to get it in two days. Uh, one time I get it in one day approval to fly above the grid. Um, I would give you yourself more time than that. I would give yourself at least a week if you can. Uh, not less than two days for sure. Not even less than three days, quite frankly. So let's say that we want to fly on Monday. Let's click OK right here. And then how long? Okay, we're gonna fly for just an hour on that day. And um, it gives you some uh, conditions in here that are the same conditions that we've seen before. Uh, lens authorization can be made only up to 90 days in advance, blah, blah, blah. And then the fact that uh, you need lights to fly at night. You can do this, by the way, fly above the grid at night and request it right from this app. Okay, that's pretty cool. Next. Eligible for further coordination. Now you notice it's not green anymore, now it's yellow. Yellow meaning, well, there's gonna be some review that needs to be done. So in here, it says the operation exceeds the threshold of pre-approved authorization from DVT airport. You may still submit for further coordination. Uh, essentially what they're telling you is that this is still a pretty short time frame. They recommend that you submit for more. Uh, I'm gonna ignore the warning. I would in real life, I would still submit it because I think they can do it in that amount of time. So I'm gonna click next. 
Now, when you get to this page and you get to the review and submit to the FA, what I want you to do is I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom because this is super important. Down in here, there's a safety justification section where you need to write something. If you don't write anything in here, I can almost guarantee you the FA is going to deny your uh, application. Essentially, what you're telling them is, why do you think it's safe to let you fly 100 feet or whatever? I requested 100 feet higher than the minimum altitude. And you can give them a reason why you're doing this and uh, and that's you're trying to convince them to let you fly in there. Tell them that you're uh, familiar with the area and that you maybe there is uh, a heliport nearby that you want to talk to. One of our students was trying to fly in an area, a zero grid, and uh, there was a heliport right there. And as he kept submitting and getting denied, and then all of a sudden he said, well, there is a heliport right here and I'm going to be in contact with them every time I fly. And that was kind of the ticket to basically get in there. Now, this is not something that you just say. This is something that you have to do. If you tell the FA, I'm going to, I'm going to record, I'm going to submit and talk to the heliport before I fly. Make sure that you do it because that's a liability, liability issue. But once you're done, you can click agree and submit, and then you're going to send this information to the FA. Then you're going to wait. You're going to play the waiting game. You're going to wait for the FA to come back and either approve or deny. If you get denied at this stage, they may not tell you why. As a matter of fact, chances are 99% chance that they will not tell you why you get denied. Then you have to play this game again. If you get denied within a few minutes, it means that you didn't give them enough time. So now you need to push your takeoff date to a few days down the road and see if it happens again. Um, I've seen reports of people submitting with too short, too narrow of a window, and then it gets denied automatically. So, so really, this is it. This is how you submit these requests. Day and night, pretty much exactly the same process uh, for part 107 for recreational flyer, except you can't do request at night as a recreational flyer. I wanted to, to mention this in the conclusion of this video. And then if you're flying above the grid, that's only available as part 107. So if you're just a recreational flyer, unfortunately you can't request to fly any higher than that. You're gonna be stuck with whatever altitude is in here. So that's all I have. Leave your comments. I'm sure you'll have questions. We're happy to help and uh, I'll see you for the next video.